Hi Stampers, I'm Meg from Loven Stamps and welcome to Maker Mornings with Meg. I have three things that I am going to teach you today about coloring with your Stampin' Ones markers. Woohoo! So these guys are super fabulous and a great way to add color to your projects, but um, really commonly or when I have people for classes and stuff, um, people will say, oh, my coloring never turns out quite the way I want it. So the good news is that after today's video, your coloring will turn out fabulously, and I'm gonna teach you how. Plus, we are going to talk about what I am, I'm just calling it, it's the number one stamp set for learning to color with Stampin' Blends markers. Are you ready? Drum roll, please. I guess if you saw the video description, you already know. But it is the Celebrate Sunflowers stamp set. So if you have another favorite learn to color stamp set, go ahead and share it in the comments. But this one I think is absolutely the best and I will tell you why as we go along. Um, morning guys. Such a happy morning for stamping, right? Hey Sandy and Kay and Trish and Cindy and Kathy and Cheryl and Sue and everybody. So, um, all right, are you guys ready? Uh, I hope everybody had a terrific weekend. Uh, hey Kelly. And I think we are going to uh, get going on this. So uh, I'm gonna flip my camera down and I think you guys are gonna be really excited about the card and how easy it is to make your Stampin' Blends color um, really terrific. Okay. And so we've got here um, a starting piece of cardstock. So this is very vanilla and it is um, three and three quarters by five inches, which is sized to kind of fit as a mat on our card. And when I started working on my uh, card for today's video, I thought, you know what, this is gonna be a masking card kind of because we just did um, masking last week. I don't have the card to show you, but oh, here it is. Uh, we just did masking last week. And so we had this beautiful fall color um, and we masked off the bottom of this. So this is really just like one layer of paper here, kind of kind of cool the way that works out. So I thought, oh, we're gonna do a reverse mask. Um, so to do a reverse mask, I'm gonna start with a piece of post-it note um, that is cut. So this is, I know it doesn't look like other post-it notes, but um, I'm gonna cut this to fit across our card and layer it on here. And apparently there's something really exciting outside, um, maybe a squirrel or something. So we'll see if Pepper will calm herself. <laughs> um, all right, so we've got this on here and we're gonna make a strip across here where our greeting is gonna go. But we want to pull some um, images in top and bottom here so that that really um, makes a highlight of that empty space in the middle as opposed to the inverse version where we put the color here and left the other parts blank. So I'm gonna bring in my stamp set. I have um, the Celebrate Sunflowers, the giant sunflower from this set. So here's the stamps and I'm gonna use soft suede as our coloring um, or our background, our image color. Uh, when you're using Stampin' Blends markers, the classic Stampin' pads, the ones that just look like this, are a great um, base because they are water-based so you don't need to worry about um, your color bleeding as you, as you marker across. So I'm gonna go ahead and put our flower on here and then I'm going to also stamp uh, here an envelope I think at the same time so we've got this ready I'll just pop, pop my envelope my flower down there okay so now we have our envelope ready to go we're not going to color that but it's done see how quick that is just make your matching envelopes all right so now I have my main image on there and you can kind of here's the sneak peek see how that's going to look um, but what I want to do now is go ahead and add some accessory images around the edge so I'm gonna add a couple leaves uh, because I need to um, I need to highlight this area here. So I want stamping all across here on both sides so that it really um, makes our um, our image stand out uh, from the our greeting strip stand out from the background. Okay, um, let's see. Now I wanna use this flower, um, but I don't want the little leaves, I just want a little extra flower to show. So I'm gonna take this and flip it this way. And there we go, make sure it's not gonna overlap. So now it goes off the bottom of our card, which is something we really like to do. And I want one up here, but I want it to peek out. So we're gonna use the dies from this, and the dies are absolutely beautiful. Um, you can use them to do all kinds of things. Here's 
just the cardstock cut from dies on a project that I did um, a year or so ago. Uh, but we're gonna use this one to make a mask. So I've cut out of my post-it note and I only needed part of it. So I'm gonna take this and line it up here. And I promise it does line up exactly. You just have to keep turning until like, there we go. See how the puzzle just kind of fits back together. And then I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna stamp our flower there in the background and take this mask away. Now, don't worry too much about that little place there um, because we're gonna cover that up. And then I think I should have left that mask on there actually. Let's see, Let's pop it back on there. Because I want to add a couple little leaves, I'm gonna add some up here and maybe one down here and think one here just to pop up and like I said, emphasize that strip across there and then maybe those guys there. Okay, so you see how we've efficiently, we've effectively covered that bottom and top. All right, but I promised you guys Stampin' Blends, so we're gonna get to that, I promise. So now you can see there is a really great strip across there and then I'm gonna take my um, Thanks A Bunch and go ahead and stamp this on there as our greeting, okay? All right, so we've got a great base. Now we need to add some color. All right, morning, hi Taryn and Lana and Jenny and Paula, Tanya, everybody's jumping in. Um, so color. All right, number one tip. Um, the order of the colors that you apply matters, okay? So um, you can kind of cheat and do other things and um, I will say too, there's other ways to use your Stampin' Blends. Mine is not the only way, um, but I will walk you through something that will make you successful if you if you work through it. So um, if you're looking for tips, I, I've got them. So the order of the colors you apply makes a difference. That's step number one. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start with my um, lighter of the two. So this is the light Cajun craze, and I'm going to lay down a color background, okay? and I'm gonna move my camera way in, I think, so that you guys can see really up close kind of what we're doing today. Uh, so, let's see, sorry, I can't process that and color at the same time. Let's kind of scoot you guys up here. I think that's maybe pretty decent. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna add this um, color background first. So first thing is to lay down um, some color here. Um, of the lighter of the two. Stampin' Blends are alcohol markers. They come in pairs. And let's see, can I get a little, I think that's a little better. Um, they come in pairs and so you're gonna use the lighter first. And I know I've talked about this tip before. This is just tip number one of the three though. Number three is kind of my favorite like finish. You'll see the difference that it makes. Okay, so number one, um, we have uh, laid down our color. Number two, is go back with a darker marker and use the color here lines, um, which are basically the, the little lines in an image that Stampin' Up! artists put in there so that you can see where it's supposed to be shadowed, okay? And this is why this stamp set is my number one favorite. And you'll see it when we get to the big um, flower over here especially, but there's lots of space um, to do your coloring and to practice, okay? Now over here, I'm gonna fill in a little bit because our lines didn't show up, but you get the idea. So lots of space in Celebrate Sunflowers, which makes it a really easy one um, to try these techniques on, okay? So um, then the, the last thing here with our color layering is to go back and to blend just a little bit at the intersection between the light and the dark, okay? And can you see how these flowers are kind of layering together a little bit so that suddenly they go from being kind of just a flat stamped image to like an element that has shape and shadow to it, okay? All right, so we're still on, we're still on big tip number one, which is the colors, colors that you apply and the order of them. So um, I'm gonna set these aside for a second because that's part of tip number two. But I'm gonna grab my So Saffron marker now. And if you wanna go back and, and learn which colors I used and so forth, there's always a link in the video description to the supply list and you can um, grab them from there. So, uh, and actually, Celebrate Sunflowers is not my, um, this is not my first rodeo with this stamp set. I loved it so much that I featured it last um, fall for a set of video tutorials and PDF tutorials and if you have those, you'll want to pull them out and remind yourself what we did. Um, if you don't have those, uh, later today on my Etsy shop, I'm going to post those tutorials and you'll be able to download 
um, those PDF tutorials, okay? Uh, along with the videos that are available on my um, blog and website. So, okay, so number one, right? We're layering our colors, light, dark, light, okay? So now I'm going back with the darker of these two, um, so saffron markers, and I'm coloring on the color here lines. There's a lot there where the flowers curve down into the petals, and you can see why this is the number one stamp set for learning to color. It's really forgiving. There is lots of square footage, and you get to um, have a lot of practice at this technique because there are a lot of great places to color, okay? It's just perfectly designed. Okay, so um, now, Usually I'd go back with the light, right? Light, dark, light. But I'm going to bring in step number two um, of my big, or tip number two of my big t coloring tips. And that is to layer different colors. So this is now Daffodil Delight. And you can see how it is going to um, kind of up our game a little bit here where I'm gonna kind of treat it like another dark color and we're gonna have the lightest tips down there at the edges of our sunflowers, like they're a little sun bleached, and then the darker of this other color, the second yellow, um, is going to come in here, and I'm gonna go over those color here lines just a little bit, okay? So you can kind of see this coming together, right? So um, first tip of coloring is to use your color, use your markers in the order, light, dark, light. Second one is to add a second color. And now I've got my dark um, Daffodil Delight and I'm going back over the color here lines especially and just bringing that color out into the petals just a little bit, okay? And then same in the background where there's color here lines, you're gonna add that darker color a little bit too, okay? You guys see how this is coming together? Now I'm gonna go back with the lightest of light now and just blend just a little bit because I don't want to really darken my tips, but I do want to um, soften any super harsh lines in the color change. Okay, you see how this is working? Okay, so we're on to step number two. Um, again, another reason that this stamp set is fabulous for this is that you get to practice again on the um, centers of the flowers. So. The um, color I like for this is Cinnamon Cider, and I'm gonna do, you guys remember how it goes now, light, dark, light, right? So here's my light Cinnamon Cider. Okay, I'm gonna do these flower centers. And you also want to um, move your, especially for organic things like flowers or leaves, you want to move your marker always along sort of the grow lines, um, the shape of the item. You don't wanna just, you know, color back and forth, just um, sort of Crayola marker style, because you'll end up seeing that. It's subtle, but you'll end up seeing that. All right, and then second marker. I'm gonna go back, and can you see the difference here between these two flower centers and how different they are? Um, this second color here just really blends out um, the tones and makes it so much um, more variety in the shape and stuff. So light, you go back with our light. All right, last one is Soft Succulent, which is a great match for these. And I'm gonna color in first our light, right? Because we're light, dark, light. And I'm not gonna use tip number two on the other things. You could certainly, I'm gonna I'm gonna skip that for these in interest of time, but you could go back. Um, Evening Evergreen would be a great um, darker one to add here. You could add some pumpkin pie to your Cajun craze. That would be a really pretty addition. Color along the lines of the, the growth and the color here lines, remember? All right, and we're gonna do light, dark, light. So we went light, we're gonna do dark, and even the leaves you can see are super fabulous for um, practicing your Stampin' Blends. The color here lines in these are terrific. And remember, there might not be color here lines, but if you've overlapped your images like we have, then you're gonna have shadow kind of where those are overlapping. So a little bit in here and under here. All right, and then I'm gonna go back with my light soft succulent because remember, we're light, dark, light and I'm gonna blend a little bit at that intersection to soften that color change just a little. And then um, you could go back with your color lifter if you want to, 
But I have a step three that is something that people forget so often, but it makes such a big difference. Um, it really finishes off your project. So let me show you. I was going to bring some ribbon in here. Um, this isn't step three. <laughs> this is me getting distracted by pretty sparkly things. Um, I was going to bring some ribbon in here. This is the fine art ribbon, uh, which has that gold speckle in it. And I was going to put some ribbon on here. And then I thought, eh, I don't know if I really want the ribbon. What about the um, gold foil um, and rose gold specialty paper and using this gold here? So I've got two strips here. So essentially we're making sort of paper ribbons and these are going to go across here like that okay really pretty and just enough sparkle and shine but we're not done with our watercoloring yet and so I'm going to bring in um, the last of this tip um, number three and that is to outline your images with a um, with a shadow color and you're just going to outline all the way around we're not going to worry about like what the shadow actually is we're just going to give it a full color all the way around and for organic like fall colors like this hands down my favorite is crumb cake so watch what happens um, we're going to do the bottom first here so you can kind of see and all i'm doing is going right around the edge of our flower so everything we've colored is going to get colored in so bonus for this any place you colored outside the lines is going to disappear now so woohoo for that um, but it is also going to make your um, image sort of stick with the paper rather than sitting on top of the paper um, sort of visually which I may not make a lot of sense in the way I say it but take a look at what it does okay so now look at the bottom half of this and how this image looks so much more real than this part, which is still sitting on top of the paper. So we talk a lot in my videos about how the layers come together um, and how we connect the different layers. So this is my tip number three for watercoloring um, with, or not watercoloring, Stampin' Blends marker coloring. Um, tip number three is to outline your image with a shadow color. Um, smoky slate is a great one, especially if you have um, a little bit less uh, like fall colors. Um, crumb cake is often my go-to, um, just one of those background color there, okay? So check out, don't you think that looks so different? That shadow really pops that color on onto, um, it, it connects it to the paper rather than having it sit on top, so. All right, so now I'm gonna take these strips I'm gonna tap down my multi-purpose liquid glue and put just a little strip across there. Remember, if you can see it, it is enough. You don't wanna go crazy with this glue. And then I'm gonna pop this on here. Now, I have some embellishments that are gonna finish this off. So I'm gonna show you how I pick my color layers, my cardstock layers, and an embellishment that just pops this whole thing. Um, into another level, really simple too. Okay, so I've got my layers on here now. All right, I'm gonna give that a second to dry. And you'll notice I didn't pre-cut these. Um, a lot of times I like to just make them a little longer because then I can go back and um, take these, always cut from the back side. Um, and also this is normal. And also why I'm not using my Stampin' Blends on my envelope, because they saturate the paper. Um, that's why they look so great, because that, that pigment um, and that alcohol helps them to saturate so that they have those really brilliant colors on there. Okay, oh good, I'm glad you guys like this. Yeah, Margie, don't those strips make a difference? All right, so you guys remember our three um, Stampin' Blends tips. One, um, remember the order that you're adding color, light, dark, light, number two, add a second color to mix up your tones a little bit and add some depth and then number three use your crumb cake or your smoky slate to give it a shadow all the way around okay all right so we need to finish this card off though and so i brought in two colors um from the the pieces here so i brought in so saffron and um cajun craze which you can see are a really nice match here for this and this is one of the reasons that I adore the Stampin' Up! tools because you know that your markers are gonna give you an image that's a perfect match for your cardstock, okay? Everything just comes together. So how to decide? Do I layer the yellow and then a card out of Cajun Craze? 
Or do I do the opposite, layer my Cajun craze and make the card out of yellow? So usually when I pull stuff out of my um, cardstock storage, I kind of test both of them to decide which one I like better, okay? So I really like this one, I think. I'm gonna layer here on saffron and then put that on a Cajun craze card, okay? So I'm gonna use my um, glue again. Remember, if you can see it, it's enough. You don't have to glob it on there. Um, all right, so I'm gonna layer that and then fold my Cajun craze in half and go ahead and layer this. And I'm, I would sometimes pop that up on dimensionals, but you know what, I'm just gonna make it flat. Crazy, right? All right, don't worry, we've got some dimension coming here with our embellishment. All right, so that is our, uh, our colored, color, color, color card, <laughs> our colored coloring card. Um, but let's get our embellishments in here. I'm gonna move you guys back up just a little bit so I have a little more space to work. Okay, and then we're gonna bring in our, um, our embellishments for this. So I was thinking that these bee trinkets are so um, sweet that they would be an, a, an excellent addition to this card. So we're gonna take one bee and we're going to pop it on here like that. And then um, to go with this, I wanted just a little bit more. And so I decided to grab the um, metallic pearls. So they come in gold and silver and uh, you're gonna grab the colors that you want. There's a lot of these, they're all the same size um, and just those two colors. So they'll last you quite a bit. And I better stick my B down before I start to add these pearls. I have a whole bunch of other sunflower cards to show you. So if you wanna see more sunflower ideas, don't go away because I'm gonna share those with you here in a second. All right, so we've got our B on there. I'm gonna pop that on with the multi-purpose liquid glue, which is super sticky. And then I'm gonna use these pearls. So remember you can use your sort of slide and stick um, technique here. And I'm gonna keep them mostly here on this flower center. So there is just gonna be a little bit of them. All right, okay, so I've got three metallic pearls and our B, and there is our card. Let's see, we stamped our envelope at the beginning, so we'd have our envelope ready to go. And then I would stamp um, a layer for the inside too with this sunflower image on it. That would be really simple, and then when you open it up, you would have that on the inside. Um, all right, you guys wanna see some more sunflower ideas? Okay, um, so these are two of the cards that I showed um, last year. So these videos are on my website. Um, I taught a little bit about bleach stamping here with this trifold card that opens like this. And if you see these background images, um, these are stamped in bleach. And then here, this um, shadow, because this is stamped on Cajun Craze cardstock, um, this is also stamped in bleach. So cool bleach techniques on that project. And then here's another one I did. This um, designer series paper is retired, but you could swap out your colors and this would be absolutely beautiful with um, the Blackberry Beauty paper that's currently available, um, with the Autumn Harvest paper that's um, currently available, and then this card is a Z fold card that opens like this. So again, like these two cards are gonna be part of the um, PDF downloadable tutorial in the Etsy store later today, so watch um, for those. But I have some other show cards to share with you. Um, this one was stamped by the fabulous Diana Gibbs, and you can see Diana used our um, technique here. She used Smoky Slate, I think. Um, to go around the edge of her colored flower. Um, this card is by the amazing Mary Ellen Stites. I love, love, love her work. And she stamped those sunflowers um, and used that masking technique. Uh, where's my mask? Remember, you wanna use your mask to protect those when you're stamping more than one. And then she used um, the watercolor pencils there on the background of those amazing flowers. Uh, this card is by the fabulous Kim Williams. And she um, did a really um, quick and easy burnished um, stamp on this. So I think she used a sponge dauber, um, which now I would probably use a blending brush, but um, she used a sponge dauber to go around these and really burnish that color in so that you get a really nice deep color. And then this paper um, is available still. This is the, oh, touch of something in, I can't remember now. If you remember what that paper's called, let me know. It's the one with all the wood grains in it, um, but it's super pretty. Oh wait, In Good Taste. 
um, in good taste paper that Kim used there. And then this is another one. Um, this is by Kim Peck and she did the die cuts. So remember I showed you those dies at the beginning. Um, we used this one to make our mask. So it's the outline. And then there's a second die here that gives you all this detail. Um, and so she used both of those two dies together to create that gorgeous card. All right. Um, and then let's see, I have this one that I showed you earlier. So these are, um, a card portfolio that has um, fold out kind of like this. And I think this is a video tutorial on my blog too. And then it had a set of cards that were like that. So um, lots of good possibilities. So number one stamp set for coloring, um, hands down, is um, Celebrate Sunflowers. If you want to learn how to um, up your game on your Stampin' Blends markers, you want to use Celebrate Sunflowers. And like I think Kim said in here, um, you really can't go wrong with Celebrate Sunflowers, but it is a great way to practice your coloring because it's gonna give you a chance to really get in there um, and add some color. And then if you wanna go back, like I think there's a, a couple places here where I really want that to be darker at the center. Um, Stampin' Blends markers are all about layering. So remember our three steps, right? One, um, put your colors on in order. Light, dark, light, okay? One set of Stampin' Blends, light, dark, light. Number two tip, add a second color. So like on our sunflower here, we actually have those two colors, so saffron and daffodil delight layered. And third step, use your crumb cake to connect your images to your background. Just go around that edge all the way around and add that, um, add that connection layer, that, that shadow, okay? All right, guys, so do you feel like you've learned something about Stampin' Blends today? I hope so. Um, this is like a little mini class. And uh, yeah, uh, if you already own Celebrate Sunflowers, I hope you're going to get it out right now and pull out some Stampin' Blends and, and get some coloring done, so. All right, well, this is our Monday. Um, I hope that everyone had a fabulous weekend. Ours was uh, taken up a lot with um, band camp, which was a lot of fun. The kids finished their, <laughs> oof, finished their marching band show, and we really excited to see the whole thing. Um, they start competing next weekend, so. That was a lot of fun. Uh, they go like on a retreat and stay over and have fire, campfire and blast and stuff like that together. Um, and that uh, sort of kicks off our Monday done. Moving forward with your projects, um, pull out your Stampin' Blends, make something fun with them. And uh, if you need supplies, don't forget the link is in the video description for all of the supplies that I used in this card. So all available for my online store. All right, guys, have a wonderful Monday. I will be back on Wednesday with more project ideas for you. And I look forward to hearing about everybody's Stampin' Blends adventures. So have fun with those. All right, guys, happy stamping. Have a great day.